you're going to hear stories today. And um, I stand here very humbly on the shoulders of a lot of you in the room. Uh, it, this is like old homework for me. Uh, I've been in DNI training for about 15 years. I was a late comer to this. Um, I hope I can provide just a little knowledge today. You know, you guys are the best of the best. I want to present you one approach that hopefully becomes a framework. You know, you come to events like this, I think, for nuggets and networking. And so I hope to give you a few nuggets today so that you can go back and really inspire your company. I will tell you my company, Why Women, focuses on engaging men in women's leadership advancement. Typically, I'm talking to a room of 300 women telling them to, what they need to do to go back and engage their organization. How do you go back and find ready now men? I tell you what, this is rare for me to actually be sitting in a room of ready now men. So we're gonna kind of consider this the accelerated program. But I'll also tell you, you're on the tip of a movement. Uh, in two weeks, I'm presenting at the Iowa Women's Conference and they're doing a male engagement track and there are 250 men in Eastern Iowa who are signed up to do this work. And so I think, you know, Ray has really caught this and said, there is a movement taking place, and how do we start to go drive this? I'm gonna give you uh, just a simple story. You're gonna hear a lot of stories today. And the, and the reason I'm gonna share my story, and you're gonna hear a lot of stories, is exactly what Ray opened with, which is men have to share their story. We're all a little afraid to do this work. It's a little uncomfortable. What I have found is the men who are doing this work have a story to tell and it's very personal to them. So for me, I was a sales guy, a 20 year sales career, Procter & Gamble, Coca-Cola, 1999. I am actually running sales training at the Coca-Cola company. And we had a $200 million discrimination lawsuit, something no company should go through. And literally overnight, I went from running, diversity, uh, from running sales training to running diversity training. And you can think back to the you know, late 2000s or the early 2000s, that horrible diversity training you've seen on The Office. That was my program. And I got to train 40,000 people in Diversity 101. And I thought this was the stupidest program I had ever seen. Nobody wanted to be there. They were all hostages. But I sat there every day and I heard stories. I'd been with Coca-Cola for 15 years. I heard stories of racism and sexism and homophobia, things I had never heard in my life. And a great friend of mine got up. He was the vice president of uh, the Columbus Syrup Branch manufacturing facility, African-American gentleman. And he told a story. He said, Jeff, every night I drive home, I've got a white Jaguar, and I live in a beautiful suburb of Columbus, Ohio. And at least once every two weeks, I'm stopped for no other reason than being a black man in a nice car in the wrong neighborhood. And oh, by the way, I live in that neighborhood. And he said, you go through a range of emotions as this happens month after month. And he said the lowest day of his life was when he was driving home from work and he got pulled over and he had his 14 year old son in the car with him. And he knew in that moment, however he reacted as a father, is how his son would react two years from now when he got pulled over. And all you can do in your anger and angst is drop your hands in your lap and be as polite as possible. That single story changed me. I said, as the father of a son, as the father of a daughter, I knew I would never experience that in my life, and I knew I had a responsibility at that point. And so I became very active in DNI. Um, my last role at Coke was Director of Diversity Strategy. I actually got to work with uh, some of the companies in this room, do some best practice sharing. What I want to share with you today is, is really a framework, and it's a business framework. I'm a business consultant. I know we have people here from government, academia, um, uh, uh, different social cause areas. I don't do that work. I'm a business consultant. I talk to senior leadership teams every day, typically 85% men. And so I want to share my approach, and I'm hoping you'll get some you know, nuggets there. You're going to hear other speakers. I think what I'm teeing up will, you know, based on the agenda I've seen and the people I know who are presenting, everything will kind of link back to this. So I, I, what I want to do is touch on some very common themes 
in a very short amount of time, and then we're going to get started with the day. This is what I call the leadership imperative. Is this working? There we go. It's to move leaders and the organization from a conceptual understanding to an integrated leadership strategy. I'm going to talk about women today. Everything I'm going to say applies equally to other aspects and dimensions of diversity. I find women to be the common denominator, that if we can genuinely have a conversation around women, then maybe we can talk about race, then we can talk about sexual orientation. But if we can't openly, honestly talk about women and what they're experiencing in the workplace, then we just need to stop and, and we're kidding ourselves. Most of our leaders get it. They get it conceptually. No one is sitting in a boardroom today and arguing why we need more women but they don't know how to operationalize that strategy. They don't know what it looks like to put it into practice in their organizations every day. So we have to move leaders from a conceptual understanding to an operational strategy that is deeply internalized and strategically executed with a sense of urgency. Sense of urgency being the key word. We've been talking about this for 15 years and the numbers of women in senior leadership in the C-suite haven't changed. And everyone will tell you it's important. But number one, number two, and number three on the CEO list are just that more important. So this sense of urgency is critical. And then the last piece I add is to create competitive advantage. I'm going to share some talent numbers with you that regardless of the industry you're in should scare your senior leaders to death. And so they need to take this information and act on it. Uh, if you want a copy of this presentation, I'm going to present a lot of facts and data. I will email it to you, so, so don't worry about, about scribbling things down. Um, but what I have found is if you're going to engage men, specifically senior men, it's a head and heart conversation. Different people have different approaches. You're going to hear those all throughout the day. But my belief is it's about an 80% head and about a 20% heart. So 80% of this presentation is going to be head focused, and I'm going to wrap up with the 20% that's heart focused. When you talk to senior leaders around advancing women, I always start with, what's keeping you up at night? What are your three burning business issues? And have you even thought that women are the solution to one of your biggest business problems? 